On October 7 last year, Hamas terrorists stormed Israel, launching the start of a deadly war that is still going on now. Since then, 30,000 Palestinians and nearly 1,500 Israelis have died as a result. There are fears the conflict will escalate further as the war enters its sixth month as Israel prepares to invade the Palestinian city of Rafah, situated in the southern Gaza Strip, where 2.3 million Palestinians are sheltering. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu still wants to push ahead with this plan, despite Joe Biden's defensive, calling it a red line. Joining me now to discuss this and the overall Hamas-Israel conflict is IDF Captain in Reserve Ayel Burham. Ayel, the Biden administration have said that it doesn't want the IDF invading Rafah. In fact, if it does, the US could reconsider their defence assistance. If this were to happen and funding would cease or at least reduce, what impact would that have? I think it will have a significant impact in any involvement that the US has in Israel and in the region. It's a critical part in order to make sure that the balance between the support coming from the West to Israel is part of the essential way to make sure that Israel will win this war. And more important to mention, I don't think that the red line mentioned by President Biden is a real re red line. And the way to understand it, similar for how the war started, when Israel announced for already a month for people to leave the north side of Gaza before Israel invaded that part. And that was in order to make sure that civilian casualties will not be part of this war, that people who are innocent can leave these areas. Similar for that, what we're expecting to see uh, if the IDF will invade the southern city of Rafah is that the IDF will give a time for the civilians, for the innocent people who are sheltering them to leave the area in order to make sure that the people who will stay there will be terrorists that are willing to fight with the IDF and not innocent civilians as there is right now. Ayel, obviously, regardless of that reassurance, this clearly indicates that the United States is worried for the aftermath of this invasion and then they obviously have experience in war. So what would you say to that kind of concern from the United States that this will result in mass casualties? It's important to understand again how this war started. It started by Hamas launching the evil terror attack in Israel on October 7. And since then, together with the U.S., although uh, uh, we all know that there are some uh, uh, different opinions on the way that the war is conducted, for 90% of the way that things being done on the ground, everything is coordinated with the U.S. and with the other allies of Israel. And it's important to mention it because, in my point of view, the dispute between President Biden, the way he explained it on his red lines, is more his relation with Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, rather than being a direct impact for how the army is working on the ground. Because the way the army working on the ground is similar for how the U.S. acted in all of the last few decades, fighting against us and against ISIS in Afghanistan and Iraq. Although this is a complicated war and nobody wanted it, we should always remember that the war like is a war is a very complicated zone. And what the IDF is dealing with is the civilians that were uh, next to terrorists that embedded themselves into, in, into this area. And that's what made it to be so complicated. And that's why, in my point of view, we, the IDF is not just doing a wonderful job in order to make sure that they are targeting just the terrorists. They're also doing it thanks for support coming from the UK, from the US, and from many of our allies. And I believe that this support will continue as the US understand that this is a mutual enemy. When Hamas will finish with Israel, they will continue fighting and uh, fighting again Western uh, ex uh, existence in the region and more. I'll, you're right. It is obviously complicated. There are uh, so many things that go into place here. But if the IDF does invade Rafa, are there procedures in place that you can tell me that would try and reduce civilian casualties? It obviously can't be ignored that 30,000 Palestinians have been killed. That is a large number. And obviously involved in that death toll are Hamas terrorists. But there are a lot of civilians, women and children, in that death toll. So I think there is concern from NATO and other allies that storming Rafah, where 2.3 million Palestinians are currently sheltering, there would be a large number of casualties that can't be ignored. So I wonder what the IDF are doing, what procedures, what plans are in place for when they do storm, it won't result in civilian, innocent civilians being killed? Mm -hmm. um, 
It's very important, again, to understand the place that the IDF is putting in the way that they conducted this war. On every measure being done, the IDF, first of all, is announcing it and sending leaflets, messages, calls for civilians in Gaza to evacuate from an area that will be attacked. And just afterwards, in a matter of days, weeks, and sometimes even months, the IDF is sending the forces there. And the reason I'm mentioning it, that also Prime, Prime Minister Netanyahu mentioned uh, on, on a few and several uh, conferences that the IDF would not attack Rafa without evacuating the civilians over there. So still, there are 30,000 people who have been killed in this war. Many of them are terrorists. And there are some civilians that unfortunately have been killed by not targeted by the IDF, but just by the strategy and the way that the terrorists are conducting this war through hospitals, schools, and UN shelters. Mm. And that's why in any way that we'll see this war continues, and we all pray that it will end soon by Hamas surrendering and releasing the hostages. Uh, but until it will not be ended, we'll see this war handling in a very measurable way by the IDF understanding that on the one hand, there is terrorists, but next to them, many times, there are also civilians. And they should act very precisely on every targeted war, uh, every targeted attack they do. Mm. Ayol, US intelligence officials say that Israel will be facing years of resistance from Hamas. What is your response to this? Does the IDF have enough in the tank to be holding off and orchestrating this war for another few years? The IDF in a very high spirits right now, both the soldiers in the ground, the commanders, and also the people of Israel. The spirit of the people of Israel is strong because people understand that right now Israel is, is, is facing an existential threat, both in the south in the north with, uh, with Lebanon, and also in the east with Syria, and farther than that with Iran involvement. And the reason I'm mentioning it is that although Israel did not want this war and did not initiate it, uh, right now Israel is facing in a situation that the people of Israel are strong and united, understanding that the only way to keep Israel existed and united and secured is by fighting Hamas, the terrorists in Lebanon with Hezbollah, and many other groups that involved and right now trying to take it as an advantage to try to eliminate Israel. And uh, in, in that way, I believe that Israel can face years of war, although we are not uh, aiming for that happening. Mm. And uh, important to say, this war can end very soon by Hamas releasing the hostages and surrendering. And until they will not surrender and will not release the hostages, Israel should do all in its capacity in order to make sure that they will bring back the citizens. And this commitment is a commitment for every country, for its citizens, the obligation of a country like the US, the UK, to make sure that the civilians will be protected and will, have, will, will be able to return home safe. Ayol, the report also says that the IDF will struggle to neutralise Hamas's underground tunnels. And we've seen this in all the photos of the IDF uh, discovering these, you know, insanely detailed uh, tunnels where Hamas terrorists are hiding in and where um, Israeli hostages have been kept. What is your response to the fact that there could be too many to, for Israel to discover and fend off? Are you confident that you can find all of these, ter uh, all of these tunnels? This is uh, the main concern that we all have. And the concern is that the only way to conduct this war, especially when we are speaking about congested area with millions of people there, that Israel should send the forces, the ground forces, into every tunnel, into every terror compound. And the challenge of that, that the terrorists are using it as a way to make a booby trap or any other tactics in order to kill as much as many uh, Israeli soldiers as they can, to kidnap and that's why the IDF is dealing and doing this war very precisely and moving from one city to the other just when they are ready and after they've been able to eliminate all the threats there. And the example of the terror tunnels is just maybe one way to understand how in the last 70 years, the Gaza Strip, that in our vision when Israel left Gaza in 2005 was to create another Singapore, was to create an ally that one day can have a peace with Israel and will be a place with technology, with tourism and innovation, we came to be a compound that creates just one, one thing, which is a terror dungeons and a terror tunnels. And that's part of our concerns, which is looking for the future, what will be the day after the war. And we all aim for this war to end soon, is a way to de-radicalize the area, de-radicalize the educational system. And of course, the UN involvement that in some way or another founded the opportunity for Hamas to grow their own, uh, their own support 
and power in the Gaza Strip. Mm. Ail, you say that you want this war to end quickly and so does Benjamin Netanyahu. He says that he the war could actually be finished within less than a month. But what about a ceasefire, especially over Ramadan? We've seen protests, uh, we've seen the US calling for a ceasefire. Is it something that you could see happening, especially over the Holy Ramadan? The Holy Ramadan is a very sensitive time, both in Israel uh, and in the entire region before this war starting, and especially right now when the war is conducted in the south and when there are still fighting happening in the north of Lebanon. And the reason I'm mentioning is that Israel, on a several situation in the last few months, created an opportunity together with the allies, with the, uh, with the US, with Egypt, with Qatar, to offer several opportunities for temporary ceasefire when the Israeli hostages will be released. And at the same time, there will be an opportunity for the Gazan people to get more aid, for some of them to return for their homes. And all, the, in all of the idea to try to show how we are showing the end for this war. But Hamas decided very radically, similar for how they started this war, to continue and pushing for more and more death and attacks in Israel. That's why right, right now they are refused for any proposal that Israel proposed for a temporary ceasefire. And more than that, that's why, why they are trying to use all of their allies and proxies in the region, including in Judea and Samaria, and some of them all around the world to attack Jewish communities and Israeli sites, both in Israel and out of Israel. And that's why our concern is very, uh, is very increased right now, as we are feeling that Hamas is not interested to end this war, rather than that, they try to escalate more. Ayal Buram, IDF Captain in Reserve, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much.